Hey everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Coding Bootcamp review. And in this episode, we're going to be going over NewCamp. NewCamp was a coding bootcamp school that really caught my eye a few months ago. I saw a few interviews with the CEO talking to a couple of different people and just the philosophy behind NewCamp. It really piqued my interest and I wanted to do some research and share that information with you. Like anything in life, you know, this is just my own opinion. Make sure to do your own due diligence when researching a coding bootcamp school. I just provide you with how I see this coding bootcamp school from outside looking in. And if anyone wants to share more information about NewCamp, feel free to add the comments in this video. I would love to hear your thoughts. But without further ado, let's get this started. So the criteria for this coding bootcamp review will be the intro and location, the technology stack, cost, instructor experience, acceptance rate, class quality, and post-grad job support, salaries, and outcomes. I'm going to be giving it a rating from one to five, one being the lowest and five being the highest. So introduction and location. It was founded in 2017 in Washington State. Co-founder is Ludo Forage. He also has a YouTube channel specific to the New Camp Coding Bootcamp School. And Directly from their website, it says that our social mission is to help aspiring career shifters in every community enter the digital economy. From my research, it looks like they're trying to bridge the gap between self-learning via online courses like Udemy and Coursera to immersive bootcamp schools like Flatiron School, App Academy, and whatnot. So this program is a 100% remote location and 100% part-time coding bootcamp, including weekends. I'm going to give this a rating of 4 out of 5. The reason why I'm giving this a 4 out of 5 is because it's not quite an immersive coding bootcamp, but it's also not just your solo learning, self-individual study. At the same time, what I do appreciate is that they're very transparent about how they structured their curriculum around remote learning, even before everything had to go virtual. So I personally believe that a four out of five is a really good score specific to the introduction and location. Well, they obviously don't have a location. The second criteria is technology and stack. This coding bootcamp is unique in a sense that you could choose three separate tracks. The first is the web dev fundamentals. The second is the front end web plus mobile development. And the third is the full stack plus mobile development. Based on my research, what you have to do to attend this coding bootcamp is take an assessment test. If you do not pass this assessment test, then you are required to take the web development fundamentals. This is a four week program that goes over the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and advanced JavaScript. You're going to be doing a mixture of pre-recorded classes and readings and eventually just get your feet wet with the basics of HTML. After you finish that course, you have one of two choices. You can either do the front end web plus mobile development and just end it there or continue on your learning and just do the full stack web plus mobile development. What I find pretty unique is that maybe you sign up for the front end web development course but say you want to do the full stack course later on, then you could just kind of move over to the next curriculum. Nothing really changes. You just keep continuing your learning. So the score, I gave this rating a two out of five, and I just want to clarify why I gave this a two out of five. A coding bootcamp school is very limited on time on what they can teach you. To me, what I find really weird is that they're teaching mobile development and specifically React Native. Yes, I get that React and React Native are somewhat similar, but they really serve very different purposes. It's like asking a hockey player to suddenly know lacrosse. There are some similar concepts and rules you can use, but to me, as a new developer, I rather have someone more focused on one technology stack than suddenly go from web development to mobile development. Rather than spending a dedicated section on mobile development, why not put more emphasis on Git or version control or put more emphasis on the CSS and advanced CSS? I personally believe that a front end web course should be dedicated on what you actually say you're going to be doing, which is front end web development. Sprinkling in that mobile development is not super ideal in my opinion, but Ludo, if you are watching this, I would love to talk to you about this as well so we can kind of figure out like what the mindset was behind adding a mobile development as part of the curriculum. 
Either way, I'm sticking to my 2 out of 5 score. I just feel that a dedicated section just on mobile development and React Native might be a little too much for a incoming student. Mobile development is awesome, I'm not gonna lie, but I rather have a student focus more on React and really get themselves comfortable using the React platform rather than just saying, oh, you learned React one week or two weeks, now we'll give you React Native. It's better to get really good at something than just be bad at two separate things. So like I said, my opinion, and I'm gonna stick with it, two out of five here, but if you have differing opinions, please let me know in the comments below. Did learning mobile development help you for any new camp graduates? Let me know. All right, this is kind of where I believe new camp really, really shines, and that's the price of the curriculum. So how this really works is if you end up taking the web development fundamentals, if you pay the early bird special, that's $349 for four weeks. The normal price will be around $400. So that's about $100 a week. Hopefully you don't have to take this course and just go straight into the front end web development plus mobile development course, because I think this is kind of where the course is really shining. If you sign up for the early bird special, then the total will be $1480 for the front end web development course. That is about $370 a month. But if you pay the normal price, that's about $1,780, which ends up being $445 a month. If you do the full stack course, that ends up being about $376 a month. And after that, if you do the normal price, it's about $436 a month. <laughs> to me, the price speaks for itself. It is so, so cheap for a coding bootcamp school. They, and they're able to give you such a low price point because of various different reasons. But for now, we are talking about strictly price only. Nothing really beats this price. And I'll go into further details on why they're able to provide assistance and teaching to students at this price point. The second thing I wanna talk about is their fair student agreement. And even though these prices are fairly cheap, they do have some payment plans that you could integrate with where you end up just paying eight to $12 a month, depending on the type of boot camp. And it's about 110 and 115 dollars 18 months after. And of course, there are some refunds possible. The reason why this fair student agreement is so appealing to me is that while income share agreements take 15 to 17 percent of your income, the fair student agreement is a lot, lot less. Let's be honest. And I think that is another major appeal about these differences between the payment structures both at a high level and even through a payment structure plan. Now I'm going to break it down to you on why the courses are so cheap. The instructor experience. Instructors are industry level software engineers, but there's some caveat to this if you do more research. The pros are that the instructors are available on Slack to answer any questions. But there are some huge cons. These instructors are not technically instructors that are teaching you the course directly. Uh, a lot of the curriculum is pre-recorded videos, and I'll elaborate that on the next criteria, but you just have to know that these instructors are part-time instructors that happen to be working in the industry. So the pros of this is that since they are working in the industry, they do know what to look for and they've been coding as a professional software developer for hopefully a few years at least. The cons are since they are working, they're not always gonna be available throughout the week. From my research, I've seen that they dedicate about 10 hours per week to help students answer questions that they might have. These instructors to me are more like TAs and not necessarily instructors. Well, and one thing I couldn't really find is how do we confirm the instructor experience? My rating for this is a three out of five. There's a little bit of unknowns here and I don't really view these instructors as instructors, but more as a kind of a TA role. And maybe some people might disagree with this, but I really believe that an instructor is someone that's actually physically teaching you some content and information. I've been told that instructors do make the videos, but you know, videos can get stale at times too. The next criteria is the acceptance rate. You take a 25 question assessment to evaluate your coding skills. If you do not pass, you get into the web development fundamentals course. If you do pass, you can start off in the front end web development course. It seems like to me that everyone gets accepted some way or another and I'm giving this a three out of five. It's not a bad or a good rating. It's just kind of in the middle. Maybe if there was a better way to really just say, hey, web development just isn't for you, 
then it would just be nice if you could save that $400. But I totally get it. You don't want to say no to people just because they might not be the top of their class. So maybe to them, the web development fundamentals course is something that is kind of that starting point for them. And if they do actually like it, then they can move on to the front end course. Otherwise, maybe, yeah, like you said, web development isn't for you. The next criteria is class quality. This is something I've been doing a lot of research on. The curriculum is video only and no in-person lectures. So these are pre-recorded videos. You have to keep that in mind. These are pre-recorded videos. There's about 11 to 12 students for one instructor and instructors, like I said before, are available for 10 hours throughout the week to answer questions on Slack. The Sunday to Friday is a study on your own schedule. Students are expected to do their exercises on their own and eventually they are graded by Friday from the instructor. On Saturday, you go into a full day session with the instructors. Here you go in depth on certain exercises and add-ons to projects and labs. Your Slack room will be with 11 other students and you will have access to a general list of students as part of New Camp. You're going to be working on a single project with a group, but you are encouraged to build your own project starting around week four in the front end course. From what I've been told, portfolio projects are optional, including some example projects. This was really hard for me to figure out because it wasn't very clear on how projects are integrated within the class. To me, projects are number one important priority because if you don't have projects, how do you showcase your skill? I really feel that New Camp doesn't necessarily require their students to do projects. It's just kind of an optional thing if they want to do it. But as a new student, you don't really know what you're doing. You don't know how important these projects are. But as a coding bootcamp school that has the experience, in my opinion, you should be the one telling your students that these projects are mandatory. And that's kind of why I've given a three out of five. It's a mixture of pre-recorded classes and not requiring projects that's kind of throwing me off a little bit here. At the end of the day, though, we always have to kind of revolve back into the price point, right? If you want to have dedicated classes or curriculum, then you're going to have to probably pay more. But since the price point is so low, they're trying to find kind of that happy middle ground to where students can still get the education. But how do we optimize the price point to make sure that it's somewhat doable? So in this case, I'll give this class quality a three out of five. I'm pretty comfortable, not too high, not too low, just right down the middle. So the post-grad job support, salaries, and outcomes. Talking to a, a new camp representative, the career services opened up in December of 2020. One thing I do love about new camp is they do take feedback pretty well. And apparently a lot of students were kind of expressing that they didn't really feel like they got a lot of job support after graduating. So now they introduced this new program where once you graduate, you get invited to do a six week career development program and it's free. And in that six weeks, you get to rebuild your resume, which makes yourself more attractive to companies. You can add projects to your portfolio. There's a one on one coaching on how to do on the interviews, both technical and soft skills, I assume. They'll also update your LinkedIn premium for one month. And this is kind of new, but you apparently get access to a job posting board where it's only exclusive to new cap graduates. So I highlighted this ad projects to your portfolio in red because this should be already part of the curriculum. In my opinion, projects are the foundation of what will help you land that next job. So why is it that you have to add projects to your portfolio at the end of the curriculum and not during? I know you're still learning, but what's the best way to learn? By doing. And in my opinion, this should be something that should be added before the end of the curriculum, not the end. So for rating, I gave this a question mark because they just opened up this career service thing at the end of December. So I really don't know what to expect from this. I do really appreciate the fact that they are taking a lot of feedback and trying to add more integrated systems to help the graduate students actually land jobs. So my summary is this. To me, this is the most affordable coding bootcamp I've seen. It's not your typical coding bootcamp because it takes a hybrid approach where you work part time, but you still feel like you're part of a community. You take courses on your time, so you're not really restricted to a set schedule. But unlike Udemy and Udacity, New Camp does something a little bit different in two categories. Psychologically, you have to put your money where your mouth is. So Maybe a Udemy course or a Udacity course is only 10 to $20, but if you're paying up 
to what a thousand dollars for a course it's not fifteen thousand it's not thirty thousand but at the same time one thousand dollars is still a lot of money so you still feel obligated or you feel like you have some stake into your career in this case or your education in this case so psychologically by putting money into the pot you're keeping yourself accountable the next thing is you also have accountability within a cohort and a sense of community. I think one thing that probably Free Code Camp and Odin Project, as great as they are, what they're really truly missing is that sense of community. And although they do have Discord channels, it's not the same. I think that if you're able to somehow bring groups of people together, and in this case, it's a cohort, and just kind of go through that same process with someone, then you just end up pushing each other to be better versions of yourself and be better versions as a software developer. It's the same concept of running with someone. Say you're running one mile by yourself, you might get like an eight, nine, 10 minute mile. But if you're able to run with someone else and maybe they're a little bit faster than you, you can kind of see the person next to you doing the things that they're doing and you want to kind of go along with them. So maybe you'll be able to improve your mile speed by a few seconds or two, but that's the same concept even with software development. By being part of a smaller community that's doing the same thing, you'll be able to keep yourself accountable and make sure you're doing the right things. Although it is all virtual right now, some coding bootcamps are still doing Zoom-based style lectures. Instructors are not going to be teaching the lectures, but providing assistance during the labs and exercises. What's really cool that I really like though is that Saturday is that dedicated time for coders to collaborate and instructors to teach. For the price, I realized that some sacrifices have to be made. New Camp is trying to just find that right blend between someone that's working by themselves, paying a cheap price, and someone that's paying a crap ton of money for an immersive course. One of my main concerns is that it might not be for everyone, especially people that need the special attention. Students can fall behind naturally because you are working part time. There are moments that you are going to be busy. So it might be better to take a Udemy course before joining New Camp. From what I've seen on other people's experiences based on YouTube, some people feel so overwhelmed they have to take a pause in their New Camp experience. So what that is telling me is that they are working very, very quickly. What you should do here is that maybe you should take a course on your own, familiarize yourself with the HTML, the CSS, and JavaScript, and then join New Camp as a way to up your learning, up your projects, up your whatever you need to do to get to that next level. Coding boot camps that are priced at $15,000 to $30,000 lately have a reputation of not having accountability towards students. and you know what it's unfortunate that that's the case because you are paying a lot of money but what i really believe new camp has done so far is they've tried to build that community and within that community build smaller sub communities to make sure that you don't fall behind within your team maybe there is some situations that students do fall behind but for that price point of a thousand something dollars i really think that this coding boot camp is doing something different and really trying to provide opportunity for people to change their lives at an affordable price. So overall, I do acknowledge that this isn't your typical coding bootcamp school. At that price point, the school is gonna have to make some sacrifices and I totally get that. So do I recommend this coding bootcamp? I would say yes and maybe a little no. It really depends on the type of learning that you want. And you have to understand, you do get what you pay for here. You're not paying for a fifteen to a $30,000 bootcamp, so you might not be getting that special attention. You might not be getting that response right away whenever you do ask a question. So just take that with a grain of salt and figure out what type of learning is good for you. Either way, I hope this was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And for those of you that are looking or even starting your journey, I say, Keep building developers, your time will come. Tech Rally out.